What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. On this episode we'll be looking at the top 10 mistakes that beginners make when starting their sportswear line. Welcome to Fit Design TV. On this channel we'll explore what it takes to make it as an activewear fashion brand, whilst providing tips, tricks and actionable steps towards starting your own product line. Whether you're an entrepreneur looking to start your own brand or just someone interested in fitness fashion, there's something for you here. What are the 10 main mistakes that beginners usually get into when starting the sportswear or product line? I have a couple ideas that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Number one is they don't have a tech pack. They go at it without any technical information or without a technical idea of what their product is meant to look like, what are the materials, what is it supposed to fit like, what are the technical details of that garment. They assume it's not necessary. Usually it's going to be necessary sketches that you make on your kitchen napkin are not going to be enough to accurately depict what it is you're looking for. And you're going to spend a lot of money trying to create samples and trying to unprofessionally communicate what it is that you're looking for. And you're going to spend a lot of time. You're going to spend a lot of effort and you're going to spend a lot of money ultimately trying to go back and forth in order to make samples, get a tack pack done, do it yourself and just cut out the headache. Be direct about what you're looking for. Number two is they have no budget. What does that mean? Sometimes starting off too small can be an issue. If you have no idea of what your financial requirements are for a certain product, because you haven't done the research ahead of time to figure out what is this thing going to cost me? What are the expenses associated with it? How am I going to be able to get this idea from something that's in my head to a physical product that's in my customer's hands and you have no idea of the expenses associated, it's very easy to get lost or to get sucked in to your project. No one's saying that you have to go ahead and invest tens of thousands of dollars starting off, but have an idea of what your budget is and remember, it's very important to know what your expenses are and can you afford those expenses. You don't want to spend 50% of what your project costs and find out that you're out of money. That's the worst possible way to go about it. Number three is they get stuck doing too many samples. It gets very exciting to create your prototype, your samples, and to have this design turn into a physical product that you can share with your friends, with your potential customers, and getting caught up in making too many samples can be a potential pitfall, it's something you want to avoid. For instance, so what is something that we see customers requiring all the different colors that they have in their tech pack, and believe it or not, factories are going to charge for this sample. It's a service, it's not free, especially when you're starting off small and the business potential is not huge, they're going to need to charge for their time, the development time it's gonna to take to make that sample. So getting caught up in creating too many samples is going to be a financial drain on your time and obviously on your bank account. Samples are going to cost more than actual products are gonna cost because there's a higher labor that cannot be amortized over the many different products you would create in a bulk order. So your samples are gonna cost more. And again, if you're starting off small, chances are those samples would not be refunded. There is a certain setup time and expertise that the factory has to incorporate into creating samples and they need to be able to offset that cost. They can't do that when the order is not that big. So don't get caught up into making too many different samples. Four is really there's unforeseen expenses. Not doing your research ahead of time to figuring out what it is that I'm going to have to pay for and where do my financial obligations lie in this project. For example, a lot of people assume that the cost of creating a product could be just the unit price. That's a very beginner take and that's a horrible take on it. There's a lot more associated with it. There may be certain die costs, molding costs for logos, certain types of logos that you're trying to create, rubber logos, uh, high quality screen printed logos. There are some setup costs that are associated with it. If you're setting up certain types of manufacturing lines, for instance, you have seamless manufacturing, there may be a small setup cost associated with that. So it will depend on the type of manufacturing that you're doing and the different details that you're including in your product. You need to be able to understand what your hidden costs are going to be. And those costs also include air freight. So basically the delivery cost, what kind of delivery method are you taking? Is there, for instance, on a boat or a sea freight shipping cost, you may have some loading costs. These are all different costs that can rack up over time. 
So doing your due diligence and figuring out what those costs are is necessary. You have also customs cost once the product lands into the country that you're importing it into there is going to be a customs cost associated with that product and that customs cost will differ between country and country it'll differ according to your country and what country you're importing it from so understanding this cost is key to not get sucked in financially number five is many companies come and they have no idea of whether or not their company name is trademarked are they able to trademark it their logo is it already copyrighted is there something similar that's copyrighted they invest a lot of time money and effort only to find out five six 12 months 24 months down the line that that specific trademark is taken and they're being pursued by legal action by another company and they have to completely change their brand image their brand structure and they lose that community or they lose that trademark or that brand foundation that they've created over the last 24 months it's very important to do a quick trademark search, find out what it is that you're really trying to get yourself into from a trademark or a copyright perspective. Number six is expecting that the physical product that one creates would be identical to the digital designs. Just because you can conceive it in your head does not necessarily mean that this will translate into a physical product. I see that with very complex designs that have many different fabrics, trims, colors, details associated with it, and the budget is far too small to be able to execute on those designs. You have to bear in mind that every single piece of fabric, of trim that is on a garment should be sourced. It has its own production. It may come from different factories, and those factories are gonna require their services to be paid for. So the more complex the garment, the higher your cost is gonna be, and sometimes things are just impossible. You have pockets that are too small, uh, trims that are too expensive, uh, details that just don't physically work on that construction of the garment. So expecting your garment to be exactly as the design is detailed may in some cases be impossible. Bear that in mind and approach that with an open mind and be flexible in the way that you're communicating with your supplier because at the end of the day, it is in your best interest to get your best possible product out there, but you do have to get a product out there. You don't wanna invest all that time and effort and to end up with nothing. Number seven is really a lot of clients or brands don't have a marketing plan. So they've gone through the trouble of creating this product, having it delivered to their, to their warehouse or their location, and now they have no idea of how they're going to market that product, whether it's through influencer marketing, through paid ads, through SEO, through creating organic content. They have no marketing plan and no executionable idea of how it is they're gonna get the word out there. Bear in mind, just because you have a product doesn't mean anyone will buy it. The first way to get someone to buy your product is to get them to know about it. Exposure is everything and putting out a great product is obviously going to be your key focus, but having people know about it is going to be your second focus. Create a marketing plan, understand what your channels are and dive into it and understand that without marketing, you won't be able to sell your product which means you won't have the fuel necessary to create more amazing products. Number eight is an amateur website. Your website is where your customers are going to find you. And that's where they're gonna purchase your designs, your products. That's what's gonna fuel your business. So having a professional, sophisticated home that is worthy of the product that you're selling is key. Just because you have a good product doesn't mean that your website can lack your branding and your identity should match the level of detail and quality that you're putting in your product. At the end of the day, the impression that your customers are gonna get from the buying experience is going to be as equally important as the impression that they're gonna get from the physical product, if not more important because that's the first place they're going to entertain the idea of actually buying your product. So make their experience as good as it can be. Number nine is a lack of packaging and trims. Customers go ahead and they create their products, they manufacture their products, and then they realize they don't have any care labels, they may need a country of origin label that by law, some countries will require that. They may need some sizing information, some uh, fabric information, they may need some hang tags in order to brand their items, some actual poly mailers in order to ship out their items. So you don't wanna be caught in a situation where you have the raw product landed on your doorstep and no way of packaging it in a convincing in a professional way. You don't wanna be using those stock white pieces of poly mailer bags when you've already gone through the trouble of creating a customized product from the ground up. You want your packaging to match it. We've done a 
video on packaging. would love for you to check that out. There's a lot of good ideas in there and a lot of awesome ways to get started in the packaging space. Number 10 and most importantly is too much copying. It's very easy to get sucked into the inspiration world and to see what's out there. And it's always good to have a visual representation of what you may want from other brands. But at the end of the day, you have to bear in mind, you're putting out something unique into the world. That should be the core concept of anything you do related to this brand. The brand imaging should be fresh. The brand messaging should be something that hasn't been done before. The idea, the story should be personal to you. Why should someone buy from your brand when they can just get the same product from a billion other brands? If you're trying to do something different, that's the beauty and that's the power of creating customized apparel. That's why this industry exists and that's the way you should attack it. What is your personal message? What's the story that you're trying to tell? Figure that out and find out how you can differentiate yourselves from everyone else and try not to copy too much. Keep your head down, do your work and create something that is truly unique. That's been 10 main mistakes that I see beginners make. Even some intermediate people that have already been in the business for a while. These are the 10 main mistakes that I see. I hope you guys can learn something from that. If I missed anything at all, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your experience has been like and maybe I can learn as well. I really appreciate you guys showing up, checking out the video. Until next time, guys, stay awesome.